Okay. Good morning and uh, welcome to a special episode of uh, Boomers Boomers Banquet. Tayo, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Boomers Banquet. My name is George. I have Bob Novales and Teddy Esperanya with me. And uh, boy, this is going to be a very special Boomers Banquet episode. Uh, we have a really special guest. Uh, of course, everybody knows Jose Marichan. And Jose Marichan is probably who we can call the most popular guy in the universe every September. And uh, no, I guess everybody knows why. And uh, we'll get to meet him later on. Uh, but before anything else, we'd like to welcome you to the show once again. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you to all those who uh, have been helping us. Ted, of course, uh, Roy Ordiales, right? Uh, the t-shirt guy. Uh, what's his company again? Uh, Design Makati. Design Makati. If you want to have t-shirts made, great material, great prints, that's Roy Ordiales for you. Seria Restaurant at Sukat Paranaque. Thank you very much. And Audiophile also. And, of course, uh, Teddy, say hello to everyone. Hi. Today, we will have Christmas in our hearts. Mm, nice, Aside no? from Bob, George, and our guests. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, Bob, what about you? Well, it's actually Joe Marichan and his life story. Makikwento mm -hmm. niya ulisat. And I'm sure some of you have heard that before. Baka may mapitas tayo na konting insights from the man. At saka mm -hmm. a lot of things that he knows about. To which ang galing-galing niya talaga sa mga bagay-bagay. And that includes... Life stories, business tips, uh, and Christmas, of course, pag pa natin. Especially mm -hmm. since Boomers Banquet tayo, we always talk about the good old days. And That's right. And uh, how much fun it would be to have Joe Marie talk about the good old days. You know? Very nice. And of course, aside from Joe Marie, we also have uh, another one who, uh, of course, uh, grew up during uh, the 50s and 60s. Uh, he's... Uh... <laughs> Guys, I thought I was the special guest. I was just waiting for my. Why? 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 Kita mo so naman, mo, oh, mukhang rebulto talaga siya. <laughs> Binabasa ko yung mga, yung mga plug mo sa akin. So, icon, radio, icon. Wow. Sa'yo ko lang naririnig yun eh. Oo, oh, oh, of course. No? Paano? Ngayon, ngayon kalat na, alam na. Oo, oh, kalat na ng lahat. No? Ayun yun. Si, sinabi ko uh, na rin, ikaw yung may-ari ng icon hotel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, June, say, say hello to everyone. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, George. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, good Teddy. Morning. Uh, thank you for allowing me into your, your program, uh, the Boomer's Banquet. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, to all your listeners and viewers, good morning to you and wherever you are across the globe. Mm -hmm. Very good. Of course, uh, uh, we're having uh, listeners now, Babe Siap, uh, Lidlin Pedrasa, Marianne Liwag, Ilado. Uh, June, hello. say hello to Marianne. Right. Good mo uh, Good evening, Marianne. Is it good yes. evening or good afternoon still? Good afternoon, I believe. And, uh, good afternoon. Tita Gantar, Tita Len, uh, all the way from Florida. Hello, good morning to you. And uh, Bell Evangelista of Film Life Homes. Hi, George and company. And a good day to all the beautiful people. We're looking forward to Joe Marie showing up in just a bit. And uh, okay, before anything else, my, uh, a lot of you might be thinking, why did we choose JSA or June Santa Ana uh, to be our special guest? Tamoyana, special guest. Yeah, uh, special guest. Hi, Mavi. Mavi Fernando. Sige, yeah, sige. Yeah, Mavi Fernando. Gina is also there. Leche Flan, uh, June. Leche Flan, <laughs> Gina. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I told Viv already about it. Yeah, all right. Okay, so uh, wh why did we choose JSA? It's simply because JSA is probably um, singularly, si singularly responsible for making oh. a song of JMC a huge hit in Asia. Uh, J uh, June, why don't you talk about it while we're waiting for John Marichan? What, how did it happen? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, 
back in the 80s, late 80s, matter of fact, I was uh, I was based in Indonesia, Jakarta. Mm -hmm. um, I was managing a radio station there and my ex-wife actually sent me a cassette of beautiful girl i think the mm -hmm. album was constant change yes that's right mm -hmm. yeah okay so she sent me a, a song because i was uh, the, the cassette cassette ano araw ah. mm -hmm. so you know sa akin sabi niya, listen to it it might fit into your format and and besides sabi niya, it's something new it's an opm and uh, you know Okay, so some people, why not? You know, I'll be exclusively, you know, playing these songs or the album on 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 uh, radio. So I said, why not? So I listened to it, and I chanced about. I don't know. I guess we have this commercial ear. Mm -hmm. I already liked. Please be careful with my heart and mm -hmm. beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. So some people, let's start it off with beautiful girl. And uh, my ex-wife also said, yeah, yeah, that's what's playing here now. That's what's uh, been, as, that's what's the single is right now in, in the Philippines. So, so what I did was, what we usually do, do in, in Jakarta was, the cassette will be having a cassette single, so to speak. We recorded Beautiful Girl there. Mm -hmm. So there was a loss already, you know, as, as we production guys would know. There was a mm -hmm. loss already. So we played it still on the air. Pare. Instantly, we got calls. Mm -hmm. Instantly. Mm -hmm. I've been asking about what song is that? What song is that? What song is that? Stop it. <clears throat> and they were asking me, you tell them it's from the Philippines. It's not available here, you know. And ako kasi, I, I'm a, uh, a radio, uh, uh, an album oriented guy. Mm -hmm. So I would usually go to. Uh, uh, record recording studios, uh, recording uh, companies. If not, I would even go to record shops, CD shops, cassette shops in Jakarta, around Jakarta. And when I was in one of those shops, there was a girl looking for the song "Beautiful Girl." Mm -hmm. he, he, she even brought a cassette. Hey, to, 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 listen to it in Bahasa Indonesia. Listen to it. Listen to it. And the guy asked, "Where did you?" get that song tell me it's from romaco uh, you know magic 106.15 then ah. <coughs> 106.15 ask him <laughs> so i told him you won't find it here i think it but i'll give you a copy which i did i gave her a copy mm -hmm. of it she was so happy how much you charge so that's her? how beautiful <laughs> <laughs> excuse me <coughs> George, I'm to be man. In the end, yeah. so so that's that's what happened. That's what broke beautiful girl in Asia. So then on, all of a sudden, uh, he was invited to guest in one of Singapore's uh, evening shows. Uh, WEA or WEA also brought him over to Jakarta. Unfortunately, wala ako sa Indonesia noon when he came over. So we weren't able to meet. We just met recently, back in 2011. After a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Recently na in 2011. <coughs> ano? Recently, no. na sayo in 2011. Oh, <laughs> long after. Because <laughs> I when we, I started to play his songs back in the 80s, pa. You know, mm -hmm. I I introduced him to to uh, the Asian market back in '89. So that was a long time ago when we met yeah. in 2011. Mm -hmm. Look at on, and he only he realized he was listening. He was a big fan of DWBR then. So when he talk, when he heard me talking about his song, Beautiful Girl, and uh, my introduction to Indonesia about it, I mean, oh, this is the guy. So, <laughs> you, know, you met Salah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when he invited me over for lunch and uh, we started getting, uh, we started to get to know each other then. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's how that's what started it all. 
Beautiful Pero ba, pagkatagal-tagal, June, hinanap niya yung salarin, ikaw pala yun. Oo. <laughs> Sabi niya, you know, kung hindi dahil sa'yo, hindi magiging platinum and, you know, and magkakaroon ng international or Asian covers yung Beautiful Girl. Mm-hmm. Well, eventually, um, we know that uh, Beautiful Girl reached diamond status kasi uh, walang sawang platinum yun eh, sunod-sunod. Kaya nag-diamond. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and that yeah, happened so. the following year too with the, the Christmas album. Yeah, yeah, everything was history after that. Yeah, it really made it really made uh, well Belliatan during that time. Universal Records very very happy, you know, very ecstatic. Oh, the it. beloved Belliatan. Oh, uh, we miss terribly. Uh, oh, by the way, Ryan De La Cruz. Good morning to you from Cainta. He's from Cainta. Thank you very much good uh, morning. for joining us. Also, Alex Cow. He's looking forward to a great, uh, a fantastic episode of uh, Bloomer's Banquet. Eman Lunaria. Hello, good morning to you, Eman, Louis Mack. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mike is not going to be around. <laughs> we'll try to uh, find out uh, uh, when he could come back. And happy Labor Day week. It's a long weekend in the United States. It's the Labor Day mm-hmm. weekend. So it's the official end of summer. Yeah. Right? So right. On, uh, on Tuesday, it's going to be snowing in... <laughs> <laughs> America already. Okay, she'll end up summer. Yeah, that actually explains kung bakit maraming kanta about September sa states. Oh, yung mga September yeah. born, see you. Oh, see you in September, ganon. Which doesn't happen here. Di ba? Yeah. When summer is gone, yung mga ganon. That, ano? that is significant oh, in September man. because of Jose Marie Chan. Oh. oh. <laughs> that, you know, it is, it is simply amazing how a song could somehow make Jose Marie Chan one of the most loved persons on earth diba every september like you know i thought we were going to be first we 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 we'd beat everybody to it well <laughs> august 31st pala si Ricky Lo lumabas na ng article <laughs> wala tuloy-tuloy na yon you see oh, his man. memes all over the place actually joe marichan is a very popular meme among kids even yeah. those who oh. don't really know him nakikilala siya because of that yung mga nakikita sa mga social media yeah. yung mga meme mm-hmm. he doesn't even have to talk the show is face there peeping out of a Christmas tree or something alam mo nang siya yun galing <laughs> and it, it, it's it's so funny but yung yun nga yung di ba i was doing daily teasers and uh, i really had a lot of fun making those teasers paano ang dami pwedeng gawin eh about the uh, JMC hindi ba i call him JMC and in fact you know pero pa nga yung signature niya eh oh. Yung, uh, ano, paano exacto yung signature niya dun sa, meron sa computer na font na ganun eh. So, I was able to somehow uh, replicate that. Ayun. Tapos Ma- tama ba? Mm. Siya yung singer-composer na negosyante. Walang iba. Mm. Mm. Tama. Right. Yep. Yes. Singer-composer, negosyante. He was successfully, he has successfully combined yung kanyang art and yung business. Yes, that's very true, no? True. And you know, the nice thing about it also is his family uh, are all musically inclined. Uh, we're going to be showing a clip later um, marking the 30th anniversary of uh, Christmas in Our Hearts, no? Uh, which is sung, which was sung, uh, performed by his whole family. It's three generations of chants who will be singing it later on and uh hopefully if the whole family is in his house today maybe uh, we could ask them to sing live for us diba? lang naman yun, eh. knowing june santa Ana, i'm sure he can convince joe marichan to do that for us oh great <laughs> challenge great. No, no, no. and uh by the way uh to all those who are viewing us uh you uh please tell your friends to watch us uh, watch us at uh, on facebook live and if they can't catch us today uh, we're going to be on YouTube and Spotify forever. So all you have to do is go to YouTube or and Spotify. All right? So that's how it is. And um, what else? So Mary Ann says it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit in California tomorrow. That doesn't sound like an end of summer, right? 100 degrees. What happened to you, uh, June? Why are you <laughs> positioned this way? See? Ayo no, naka ano? June, can you hear me? Or right, I was talking to JMC and oh, no, he's trying to ano. Uh, oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. okay na. Okay, great. No, 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 I was no, just no. speaking to Joe Marie and I think mm-hmm. he got the link on. Uh he should uh-huh. be in any second now. Okay, uh Bob, can we uh play can we just stop just uh mm-hmm. just as an intro? 
Uh oh. While waiting for Joe Marie. You're picking it up? Okay. Yep. No. Full screen. Si Bet Tamayo ba yun? I think it's Bet Tamayo. Yeah. Yes, yes. June, just tell us if uh, he's ready. Yeah, I, I think he's get, trying to get into our link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we Mom? bring him in? Can we bring him in? Now? Yeah, yeah, I think so. it. Okay. All right, here we go. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jose Marichan. All right. Maybe we can cut off the music and uh, let the JMC talk to us. Good morning, sir. Good morning, guys. Uh, can you see Good me? Good morning. Yes, we can see you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, can, oh. yeah okay. Hi. Right. Good morning, guys. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm late. I'm late because no. I, I still had breakfast with uh, my wife and my son and my daughter. So, anyway, good to see you all, guys. Let's see good. from left to right Bob, George, Teddy, and June. Yeah. Right. Of Hello. course. Someone introduced me as Jose Marichan. People might think that my family name is Marichan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, someone had asked me that before, and mm -hmm. I was a little bit offended when he said, uh, your family name is Marichan. Are you Indian? <laughs> <laughs> complete, complete with a head uh, yeah. roll, right? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Marichan from New Delhi. I said, no, no, I've been to the New Delhi at the corner. <laughs> 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 Some of my best friends, uh, some of my best friends as I was growing up were Indians. They were uh -huh. wonderful guys, and they're some of the most intelligent races in the world. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, the Indian woman is probably one of the most beautiful in the world. Oh, Look yes. Eyes. I oh. will have to agree with you. I will have to agree with you. Did you, yes. have, any, did you have any Indian classmates in Ateneo? Uh, yes, I had. And... Uh, even in in Iloilo, I had several friends, uh, mm -hmm. and I remember them. Lokumal, it was a girl named Sheila Lokumal who's passed away, and uh, the Ramchandani. Oh yeah, right. Ramchandani. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, how are you guys? Great, great. You know, Joe. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we uh, Boomer's Banquet is actually a nostalgia trip. Uh, we we uh, set this this. Uh, uh, live stream up. We've been, uh, this is our sixth episode, right, Bob? Yes, it is. Sixth yes, it episode. Is. And we set this up because you know how it is, the pandemic and uh, the quarantine. People feel so bad. And here we are. We, we want to put in a lot of nostalgia uh, to our to our live stream every week, just to make people remember. And of course, it goes without saying, a lot of boomers don't even know how to use the computer. So uh, we're trying to teach them how to, you know, get into the internet. <laughs> <laughs> at least once a week and what better way to do it is than with you know John Marie Chan See? thank you very nice <laughs> if I may if I may but in uh, George uh, there was some there was a comment uh, on the scroll saying that mm -hmm. uh, you mga name tags do natin ka color ng Shopee Oh, of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what's what's that all about? Yung Shopee, yung Shopee uh, promo. Yeah, well, three years ago, they got me as their ambassador, mm -hmm. uh, brand ambassador. So this is my third year, and uh, so I was forced to dance. I'm although I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a good dancer. And the first year I practiced many many times. Sa sha beep 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 beep. Did you compose that? Did you compose that? Uh, no. no, no. no. Uh, that is uh, what is the name of that uh, piece? Uh, baby shark, yeah, baby yeah. shark, baby shark. No, oh, that's baby shark. shark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, last year, they used one of my Christmas songs, and we converted that into a shoppy jingle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Hey, by the way, uh, Michelle Vincent's from South Carolina is tuned in right now. Uh, also, uh, Tita Len uh, in Florida. Gina is in Los Angeles in Northridge. And now, Joe, uh, I just uh, I just want to go back uh, several years uh, several years ago. When you uh, when did you actually start singing and composing? Was it in Ateneo or after school? No. Even before that, George, I was a little boy in Ilo Ilo. Uh -huh. And the very first song I wrote, mm -hmm. it, it never left the paper on which it was written. Okay. And it was called I Want You. Uh huh. Um, you know, the title is uh, simple, but the melody was derivative. It mm -hmm. sounded like many of the popular songs at that time. Uh -huh. I guess. I guess most composers really start that way. When they mm. compose, they are influenced by the music that they liked. Mm -hmm. For example, oh, what was that? I mean, June was whispering to his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> was that? That, 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 that was really. <laughs> that was that was really sensitive. You, I mean, this this uh, this technology we have right now is so sensitive. You could have. Did you hear what I said, Joe Marie? What I what I whispered? You said, "Amiana." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, very good one, Joe Marie. Now, anyway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, as you no, were saying, no, yeah. Ryan de la Cruz says, "Good morning, Mr. Jose Marichan." Mr. Jose <laughs> Yeah. Good morning, Ryan. Okay, to go back to my first song. Mm -hmm. I said it was very simple, but honestly, it was derivative of the songs that were popular at the time. Uh, what particular song are we talking about here? Uh, what? Uh, where did you derive it from? You know, I don't even remember anymore. But if you mm -hmm. hear it, and if you're familiar with the songs of the 50s, Mm -hmm. you say, ah, yeah. It sounds like this, it sounds like that. And it goes like this. I want you. Oh, 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 oh. I need you for the rest of my whole life through. <laughs> so my vocabulary was quite limited. Uh -huh. I, you, I need you for the rest of my whole life. <laughs> you know, you know, at least uh, you had uh, a lot of words. The Beatles started with yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. but they were they were innovative in that they introduced some chord progression mm -hmm. and yeah combination of uh, of notes that they were very creative and that's why you know the beatles music is still being played around the world oh yeah right now you even have the counterpoint to uh, the beatles here there and everywhere right and that yeah. was a very interesting counterpoint yeah, <laughs> and and that was grade school or high school when when you did I want you. I was in grade school. Uh huh. When uh, did you transfer to Manila? Okay, but first we're we're still back in the fifties, George. Don't rush. Fifties. <laughs> All right. Fifties. <laughs> I want uh -huh. you. Oh, I need. And then after that, I wrote a song, believe it or not, called Lady Chatterley's Lover. Lady Chatterley's Ooh. Lover. Yes. Mm. Very interesting book. <laughs> many, many of my friends from from the from Ilo Ilo would remember that song. Mm -hmm. But um, we won't uh, sing that song here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a it was based on a book written by D. H. Lawrence. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember it was made into a movie, but yeah. So my first serious composition was Afterglow. And Afterglow. Uh, are you playing the piano, George? Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Afterglow was written for my girlfriend. Uh -huh. uh, my girlfriend and I had been going steady for like a year, but you know, there were many other speakers and her mom was very strict. Her mom didn't want her to go steady with only one person. And I can understand that. Now mm -hmm. that I have my own daughters and my own granddaughters, I can understand that. Don't go steady with one person. 
you know, be as open as you can, meet as many people as you can, diverse play the field. friendship. Yeah, <laughs> not play the field because it has a bad connotation. <laughs> play the field meaning, you know, uh, go around. And, no, but just, hey, where's, where's that coming from? <laughs> okay. So anyway, to go back to that story. So we had been going for a year, going steady, but there were many other suitors. And one day she confronted me. She said, you know, I don't want to hurt you, but uh, I'm beginning to have this feeling towards another guy. And so uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm confused now. So I told her, I said, it's okay. We're both young. You know, take your time. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why the lyrics go, uh, I will wait for you for that second dawn. We love this mm. All right. Yeah. Very nice. You know, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, um, people say that when Frank Sinatra sings a song, it's like he's telling a story. All right. And, uh, but uh, your songs, uh, I've been, you know, I've been trying to analyze your songs. They tell stories. In fact, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe it's your facility in the English language that has helped you a lot in creating those songs. You're not only just a composer, you are one heck of a songwriter. Thank you for that, George. By the way, where, where did you get that? Mathi Fernando says he likes my song, Pines. What about Pines? Pines? I have it on single. Yes. Yes. I was also single when I wrote that song. <laughs> <laughs> so what? what is that? Pines is what? Yearning or the Pines Hotel? No, Pines was or the Philippines. flip side. Was mm -hmm. the flip side of Afterglow. Afterglow, yes, that's right. 45 RPM, you know, that small record with a big mm -hmm. hole. 45, <laughs> 45 revolutions per minute. Uh-huh. And us pine boomers know that, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, what did you say? Us, us boomers know that, Joe. Uh, <laughs> the next generation probably don't. No, I know. They've forgotten. Um, but anyway, uh, Matthew, I'm glad you asked that question about pines. I composed pine when I was vacationing one day in Baguio. It was a summer, mm -hmm. and I was there with some friends. And... It was not my first time in Baguio, it was several times, but as I was growing up, Baguio became more and more, more uh, attractive uh, destination for me. So even now, I long for the pine trees and the smell of pines uh, in Baguio. So I wrote that song, Strange How the Pines Call Out to Me, Strange. Um, Strange how the pines call out to me. Strange is the spell they have on me. I keep coming back where they stand tall and brown. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's that's how you do it. You experience something. It's experiential. You, you experience something, then you write about it. Yes, yes. Because uh -huh. um, in songwriting, number one rule is honesty. Mm-hmm. Honesty. So you have to, otherwise people can tell that you are not being truthful, you know, when you're singing the song. So that, oh, somebody's sipping coffee. <laughs> there. Oh, anyway, no. Um, you know, like, just like when you hear a song, like, uh, when I fall in love, mm -hmm. it will be forever. Or I'll never fall in love. You can tell that the songwriter was meaning every single word that he put in there. Mm -hmm. But when I started composing, uh, uh, George, my somebody sipping coffee. Somebody sipping coffee. Who's sipping coffee? <laughs> uh, when I was writing my songs, uh, George, uh, Bob, Teddy, June. My English, my English vocabulary was quite limited. Mm -hmm. Listen to my song. Deep in my heart, I know that deep in your heart, you know that mm -hmm. we both know. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I could not progress farther than deep in my heart, I love you. Deep in my heart, I care that, you know. Mm -hmm. but 
you know, I mean, you don't argue with um, with honesty. Yes, that's the right. The people <laughs> feel the honesty in deep in my heart, and that's why it became a big hit for me. Thank you. God. Know, you know, uh, speaking of deep in my heart, the very first song I co-composed uh, was patterned after deep in my heart, and it goes oh. like, "When the sun sets, I think of you." Deep in my heart, and 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 it's nice. almost see, we were inspired so, by that. Fixing a link any Joe for that. Joe. <laughs> no, 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 you know, all composers borrow from each other. That's right, true. Uh, yes, if I may, Joe, um, about yes, your deep in my heart, is it linked to constantly, of which you're most associated with us, then as a, the clip Richard of the Philippines? The end of constantly is deep in my heart, right? So that could have been something in your subconscious that started perhaps, you with the film. Perhaps, but um, it was accidental when I found out that uh, my voice resembled that voice of Cliff Richard. It was yeah. quite accidental. And when I found mm -hmm. out, and because Cliff Richard was very popular among the girls, mm -hmm. I, I capitalized on it. So... Many of my songs afterwards, songs that came afterwards, uh, resemble the voice of Cliff Richard. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, uh, I, I guess that's uh, uh, Cliff Richard, uh, well, somehow uh, linked up with the shadows during that time. Uh, you went to 19ers, but you never linked up with any band. You, you didn't uh, follow that route. No, I was a member of several bands uh -huh. in... Um, in college, I was a member of a band called Whip and Poof. Whip and, and Poof. Poof. Yes. Okay. Patterned uh, after the Whip and Poof song, I suppose. I guess so, but I guess the, the owner of the band just, you know, picked that, picked that uh, word from, you know, from somewhere. By the way, someone uh, sent a message about, can we just stop and talk a while? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, that's I, it. Uh, Ryan, Ryan De La Cruz says... <laughs> Can we just stop and talk a while? One of my favorite songs. Read an article about this song. If I'm not mistaken, it was an entry in Japan for Asian Song Fest, 1961. I hope I said it right. No, no. 1961. Uh, oh, that's June breathing. I thought he was sipping coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> June, you're supposed to be making these sounds elsewhere. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sipping something else, though. You know, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to be to funny on this, to be funny. <laughs> uh, okay, before I answer the question, there was another text that came in. You know, we have to give importance to our listeners. Yep. It would be nice if you have a lady in there, too. Opinion based on a woman's point of view. Belinda. Okay, yeah. Belinda. Yeah, yes. Belinda. Okay. Anyway, so the next time... Uh, George is going to to invite a lady with us. All right, <laughs> we'll do that. They can right. bring in their two cents worth anyway. So okay, the first question was, can we just stop and talk a while? Was it an entry in a Japan Song Fest? The answer is yes. Yes, it was seventy three. Seventy three. Seventy three. Uh -huh. uh, there was an international song festival in Japan called the World Popular Song Festival, sponsored by Yamaha. Yamaha, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vic Del Rosario called me one day and said, Joe, there's a contest in Japan, and I would like to, to send in an entry. Uh, can you compose a song quickly, uh, something that would represent the Philippines? And then he said, I hope you don't mind, but I also ask three or four other composers. And then let's see what anong pipiliin ng, ng Japan. So very quickly... I wrote that song, Can We Just Stop and Talk a While? And thank God it was chosen, it was picked by Japan. And I personally went to Tokyo to sing at the Nippon Budokan Hall. At the in, Budokan Hall? Huh? Yes, in front of maybe 10,000 people with a full orchestra. Can we just wow. stop? Unfortunately, the song did not win. Uh, the grand prize winner that year was an Italian song, uh, Parigi a volte cosa fa. I still remember the title. <laughs> yeah. 
curiosity, Joe Marie. Yes, yes uh, how like like can you just stop and talk a while? How fast or how how fast did, were you able to write that song? I don't remember anymore, but since Victor Rosario was in a bit of a hurry, I knew I had to write that maybe in two or three days. And wow. uh, yeah, and the first person that I asked uh, for opinion was my wife, Marianne. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I said, honey, what do you think of this song? I sang it to her. She says, it's nice, but I don't think it's going to be a hit. I said, why? He says, because the title is too long. Can we just stop and talk a while? So I said, honey, they judge the song by the melody and the word, <laughs> not by the title, you know. So um, the song did not win in Japan, but fortunately for me, when I came back, uh, the song became popular here and it mm -hmm. led to several albums. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pwede natin balikan sandali yung 60s. 19ers, okay. 19ers on channel 9. Yeah. Kung nagkataon pala na yung 9, naging 4 na nun, so 14ers. <laughs> <laughs> Di ba yung channel 9 owned by ABS-CBN and channel yes. 3 then? Yeah. Tama, no? No. Then they Actually, right. channel 2 and 4. Actually, CBN, CBN yes. owned channel 9. And yes. uh, ABS old channel three. Yeah, okay, combine uh, on it. ABS TV and that. Okay, the story was when martial law was declared in 72, 72, yeah. 72. 72. So yeah. When martial law was declared, the first thing that uh, President Marcus did was to take over ABS CBN mm -hmm. because to him, media was very important, the military was very important, and the massa. So 3M unit, Marcos, media, military, Mid and Masa. the master. So mm -hmm. when he took over the ABS-CBN, they converted it to BBC, Barangay yes. Broadcasting Company. And Channel 9 uh, was... Um, KBS. RPN9. Yeah. KBS. But right. wait, 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 wait. Teddy, we're going yeah. ahead of our story. Uh, 19ers was not martial law days. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 60s. It was 60s. Yeah. It was in 1966. Uh -huh. Channel 9 at that time, owned by ABS-CBN, was uh, along Rojas Boulevard. Yes. That's right. Uh -huh. And at that time, Rojas Boulevard was called Dewey Boulevard. Dewey. <laughs> yeah. Do we remember? <laughs> <laughs> It was but named Admiral after Admiral uh, George Dewey. Yeah. George Dewey. Yeah. Joe, eh, diba? Yan yung merong barbecue one sa labas, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you have soft drinks there. Uh, probably after a show, you would go there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the story behind that was this. 1965, Pete Roa, who mm -hmm. at that time was connected with ABS-CBN. Yes. Uh, approached me and asked if I could host this TV show, a daily TV show, huh? mind you, a daily TV show called 19ers, patterned mm -hmm. after the combo concerts, the camp festivals, song festival Shindig. in different, yes, yeah, Shindig. Shindig, Halabaloo. Halabaloo. <laughs> yeah, Halabaloo, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, they came to the, Pete Rowe came to the house to ask my father's permission if I could uh, host the show. And my, my father was concerned that since I was still in college, I was only in second year, he was concerned that my grades would suffer. Mm -hmm. so, but finally, because my father saw the glint in my eyes, the excitement in my eyes that I really wanted to do it, you know, so he said, okay, but on two conditions. The minute that his grades would suffer, stop, okay? Mm -hmm. And the second condition is don't pay him a salary. Well, mm -hmm. well, so I guess the wisdom behind that was that if you get paid for doing what you enjoy, you will never stop doing it. Uh -huh. And you will never finish studying anymore. Yes, yes. <laughs> so my father, yeah, he had that wisdom.
So anyway, I did it for about a year, Teddy, a year and a half. And I composed the theme song. I'll get around nine teeners. Come around nine teeners. Come <clears throat> and down. Nine teeners, get around. Up and down. Again, with that yeah. vocabulary, you know, up and down, <laughs> get around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, oh, I patterned it after after the Beach Boys. Beach Boys, mm -hmm. yeah. Get around, round, round, get around. See, I get around, yeah. round, round, get around. Oh. What song is that? Uh, sinong oldest dito sa atin? Si June? June, what was the title of that Beach Boys? <laughs> I get around, round, 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 round. I come around. <laughs> June? <laughs> What was the title of that song by the Beach Boys? After round, round, get around, I get around. I, I get, get around, it. yeah. Right, who, who was that? Diba that title? Yeah, I get around. Yeah, yeah. I get so around. That's, yeah. that's the first number one song of the Beach Boys. That's in, correct. In 1964. So, so my 1966 theme of 19ers was patterned after that. I told mm -hmm. you. Even until then, my English vocabulary was quite limited. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a glass of water, okay? All right, sure. so don't leave. And then uh, <laughs> some of the text messages that are coming in. All right, let's let's uh, let's uh, do a shout out first. Um, uh, Emma and Lunaria, the quarantine version is awesome too. We're, we're talking about Christmas in our hearts. We're gonna be uh, playing that a little later on. Also, um, Mel Mendoza is watching. Joe Marie says, uh, the lo love to last a lifetime has great lyrics. And um, here's a very nice question which we can ask later on, Bob. Is it true that someone else was supposed to be your partner in Christmas in our hearts? Yeah. Right? Yeah, we can ask that later. Yeah. <laughs> when Joe comes back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Bell, of course, thank you so much. Keep on watching, Bell, and please tell your friends I want the whole film live phones to be watching us right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ayon. And uh and Leon, see Bell, Evangelista. Uh, she usually frequents bars and uh, watches all those oldies bands. Bell was three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ganon, no? Ano nangyari kaya, no? Bakit po una lang yung nakikita natin kay Teddy? I'm <laughs> 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 sorry. I'm <laughs> Ganon yun, no? Baka like siya yung tagapuha ng tubig ni Joe. Kaya... Ayun, no? Nag-igib. Nag-igib. Eh. Um, Belle Evangelista was three years old when I get around became a hit. Uh, <laughs> Grabe, no? Joe, uh, you know, Alex Kao has a very nice tribute to you. Joe has made so much contribution in popularizing local music. Not only here, but globally, he should be proclaimed a national artist. What about an international artist? No, no, no. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Alex. I know he's a, he's a friend of mine. He's a friend oh. of mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, so, uh, okay. Yeah. But I did not plan Tima to say these things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to 19ers. Uh, okay. who, came, who came first, you or Rom Azanza? No, together. Because, oh, you were together. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, because uh, since we were classmates in college yeah. and mm -hmm. we were good friends, he had, a, he's a, he had his own singing group called the Fabans. Oh, yeah, Fab the Fabans. Oh, yeah. that's how you pronounce it. I thought it was the Fabians. Uh, after Fabian. Fabian, you know, the, the Fabian. singer. Yeah. Fabian. Fabian, uh -huh. because freshman A, B, section A. Oh. Freshman, the Lord, freshman A, B, section A. Fabians. Mm -hmm. So okay. it was uh, Roman Azanza, Bing Azanza, Tito Osias, Johnny Salientes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they had a singing group and they would sing... Um, Kingston Trio songs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mitchell Trio songs. Brothers Chad Four. Uh, I don't know if they sang Brothers Four. It was more Chad Mitchell Trio, uh, uh, Kingston Trio. Uh huh. Very yeah. nice, huh? So <laughs> Tito is he, a, is he a friend of yours, George? Uh, Rom and uh, Tito Sias. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Good friends of yours. Yeah. Shai Torres. Is that Shai or Shea? Shea Torres. Shea Torres. I love all I your songs, Mr. Jose Marichan. Right. No, Jose Marichan. Jose Marichan. 
<laughs> it's the fingers, you know. Typo, typo, error. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, 19ers, and then uh, how how the were you part of the production uh, production uh, planning of that particular so, uh, show because it became a huge hit among you know teenagers that time. Yes, and I remember George. Um, a 19ers was aired at six o'clock in the evening. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. It was opposite another Ora popular Sanligaya. show on Channel Ora Sanligaya. Ora Sanligaya. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Alina tayo magsaya. Of course, Channel Red. You would want to look at the 19ers more sa itsura kasi sila oh. Oscar at sila Doro yung nasa. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Of I course, sa so, so, so 19ers, Joma, jo, uh, jo Marichan, Roma Sansa, siyempre sila Bambi Talam, and Evelyn Del Rosario, the dancers. And you know who was one of our dancers? Sampagita. Yeah, Sampagita. Oh, oh that's right. She was one mm -hmm. of our dancers mm -hmm. before she became a star. Uh -huh. yeah, Naka-net yeah, yeah. naka stockings pa sila lahat doon eh, no? Uh, yeah. London look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I used to sing uh, when I was a kid in Iloilo. I used to sing songs by the Platters. Oh. Remember when I was my own backup singer. Yeah. <laughs> Remember when doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Yeah, I, I could not afford to have backup singers at that time. But uh, later on, when I started uh, uh, doing concerts, um, I already came with backup singers. But uh, in those days, I could not afford. Oh, there was a time pala when uh, I, don't, I can't remember, with, it was in college, when I had two backup singers. That, mm -hmm. I, that I fondly called my Chu Chua girls. <laughs> my Chu Chua girls. Rosie Chu and Julie Chua. My Chu Chua girls. Chu Chua. <laughs> <laughs> Corny, ma Corny. <laughs> it works. You were, were, you, were you part of any group, a singing group in the 60s, like the Looney Larks or no. uh, whatever? Uh -huh. No, I was never... I was never even a member of the Ateneo College Glee Club. Glee Club, right. That's right. Uh -huh. who, was no the who was the moderator of that time? Reuter or Kuna? Father Kuna. Father Kuna. He's my uncle. Oh, yeah. God bless his soul. Uh -huh. he was, yeah, was a friend. Uh -huh. He was telling me he, uh, he uh, did not accept Basil Valdez because his voice stood out. So he was rejected by the Glee Club, but he, uh, he told Basil to go on his own. As a solo artist, you know who was an active member at the time, the composer Willie Cruz. Yes, that's right, Willie Cruz. Willie and Cruz. then, then went on to the ambivalent crowd, right? That's correct. Uh -huh. And Willie Cruz is one of the composers that I really respected. Mm -hmm. I really respect. He wrote some beautiful songs, Willie Cruz. Indeed, indeed, that's right. Okay, and so his father speak has passed away. Yes, that's right. But, uh, you know, okay, uh, moving forward to Willie Cruz and uh, stuff. Uh, you got involved with the ambivalent crowd for one song, Here and Now. Um, I, I didn't join them. I wasn't part of the group. But uh -huh. um, since all of them were friends of mine, I asked them to guest in one of my albums. You're right, uh -huh. Here and Now. Wow, yes. you have good memory, uh, Daniel. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in that particular album, uh, well, Nan Clavicilia was the one who sang there, and uh, Paul Enriquez, right? Uh, for here and now, and you, and Cynthia Pata, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, there is one song in that particular album. Well, Love at Thirty Thousand Feet is there, but the one song which uh, is was never played on radio, except by me, was Love. I don't know if you remember that song. It's called, uh, it's simply titled Love. Love is a feeling you That's feel it. when uh, you're feeling. I love that never song. Felt before. See how limited my vocabulary was. <laughs> <laughs> but that 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 was an amazing song for me. Oh, I, I really fell in love with that. So and of course another one. You sent me a copy of that, but uh, somehow I couldn't find it. I was about to play it today. Um, 
Why did we not meet some years ago? Long time. Oh, but George, I thought I sent you a compilation. Of uh, my... you, yes, you sent me three, but it's not there. Why did that? Why did we not meet? Is not there? Nope. Oh. It's not here. Uh huh. But you know, I'd like to think that why did we not meet? Did not become popular, but uh -huh. it must have influenced the composer of Sayang. Oh, oh yes, that's right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But you know, why did we not meet? Uh, 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 believe it or not, so we got an offer from Vic Del Rosario because of that song. Uh, I had a singing group that time, two girls and two boys, and uh, we sang that in a concert in St. Mary's College. All right, oh. uh, we we put in a four-part harmony for that particular song. Then after that, we got an offer to be recording artists. Is that right? Which we turned down. Oh, sayang ah. Mm, because <laughs> it, simply because we we were in still we were still in school that time. Nobody nobody even ever thought of that. <laughs> and what was the name of your group? We didn't even have a name. See, we it, we just uh, we just happened to okay. Let's let's form a group, sing in that concert. Uh, well, Vic the Rosario was there, and uh, we sang it. Sad to belong, and then uh, why did we not meet? And my fair share, and um, emotion by uh, Samantha Sang. Oh, okay. Do you remember the 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 members that you had? How many? How many were you, and what were their names? Four. Nolep Giazon, uh married Amy Flores. Uh, they're, uh, they're in Hawaii now. Nolep is a member of the Beatlele. It's the, uh, the Beatles tribute group. They all play ukuleles instead of uh, <laughs> regular instruments. And they were one of the biggest hits in the Beatles festival in the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, so Beatlele is composed of two Filipinos and two... Uh, Americans. Nolet is also the brother of Cesar Chiazon, who used to be the bass player of the Chosen Few, who used okay. to play Beatles back in the 60s. Boy I Camara, see. if you remember. Yes, I know. Yeah. I remember Boy Camara. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They were the, and Sani Tolentino, they were part of the Chosen Few that time. Okay, I see. Yeah, sayang, no? I mean, yeah. do you have at least a tape? Of your voices, sing I, I'm voices. gonna ask him if uh, if he has he still have open reel panune. When we used to practice in at home, uh, we used to open reel. So I don't know if he was able to preserve it. I'll give him a call. If he has it, I'll send you a copy. Yeah, not necessarily a copy of Why Did We Not Meet, but mm -hmm. you know, it's good to hear your harmony and the mm -hmm. way you sang together at that time. Mm -hmm. Because Sige. those are memories that are irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. You know, Sige. I'll, I'll send you a couple of songs which we were able to retrieve. I don't know who posted it on YouTube. Somebody did, and then all of a sudden uh, it was sent to us. So I'll send you that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, George. <laughs> yeah. Okay, going back to now, let's go to the seventies where your jingles were probably uh, if there was a hit parade. On television and radio, your jingles would be number one all the time. How did you get into commercial uh, jingles? Uh, okay, again, it was because of an Athenian, an Athenian named Albert Gruppe. I don't know Gruppe. if he's. Oh, yeah, Albert Gruppe, right. Uh -huh. Albert Gruppe was part of a singing group called the Looney Larks. Oh, that's right. Looney Larks, uh, composed of uh, uh, Gachalian. Albert Edgar Chaliari, uh, mm -hmm. Sani Marabu. Uh, it was a great group. They were My marketing teacher. <laughs> they were ahead. They were ahead of me. They preceded mm -hmm. me. And the Looney Larks. Uh, they combined comedy and harmony. Um, so anyway, Albert Gruppe, um, after college, began to work for an advertising agency. So he had gotten, uh, will, um, he had gotten uh, Gachalian, Eddie Gachalian to compose yeah. several jingles ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And then one day he calls me and he says, Dial Soap mm -hmm. needs a jingle. So that's how I started my jingle writing career. Uh, new Dial Soap is was for that of you 
the active and, and, and the beautiful you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, aren't you glad you use dial, right? Yeah, that's right. Who sang that? Tilly Moreno? I think so. Tilly Moreno. Right. Tilly Moreno, right. Uh-huh. And then uh, it went on and on. One of your more popular, of course, was the uh, Sun Quick, also, right? Sun Quick, over twenty classes. Mm-hmm. Very nice, right? And uh, and of course, uh, Love at Thirty Thousand Feet, uh, Philippine Airlines, uh, which was uh, actually an offshoot of what EWA doing uh, Up Up and Away, yeah. and Cafe Pacific doing Love Love's Theme, right? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, uh, Love at 30,000 30, Feet was only used for a few years, and then they pulled it out. And after uh, after George and uh, Lucio Khan took over, he called me and said if they could reuse it. And I said, sure, because, you know, he's a good friend. Incidentally, uh, uh, his wife passed That's away gone. Right. Uh-huh. days ago. Anyway, and then the other jingle that I wrote... Uh, was uh, there are Chinese soups and there are uh-huh. Chinese soups, but there is nothing like nori, nori Chinese, Chinese soup. Nori one of a kind. Nori is the best you can find. Nori is easy to cook. Just add one egg. <laughs> right. Wait, did Louis Ocampo sing that? No. Yes, that uh, part. It, that part. Actually, no. uh, okay. it was sung by Richard Tan. Uh huh. Richard Tan, and then at the very end, Luyo Campos' voice came out and he said, Good, huh? <laughs> oh! <laughs> All the while, I thought Louis sang the whole thing. No, no. So I asked Louis to arrange it. And uh-huh. I said, Louis, make it sound Chinese. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Good, huh? <laughs> you know, speaking. Uh, Luyo Campos sang a portion of it. Uh huh. There is nothing like no oh yeah. Tiny soup. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But you know, okay. Speaking of that arrangement and make stuff, sound, right? Make it sound like it came from Minondo. <laughs> <laughs> Who picks your arrangers? Who chooses your arrangers? I do. You too, because yeah. you know, uh, 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 about about four nights ago, I was listening to the whole CD of commercials, strictly commercials. And it was so refreshing, the arrangements. See, uh, it was like listening to uh, I don't know Percy Faith or something, right? And uh, I was just reading a book, and uh, that was uh, playing on my computer. And I just loved listening to all those things. And you know, I noticed all your arrangements are so lush. They're so lush, and. Uh, I was wondering, uh, did you have any part in telling them, I want this arranged this way or stuff? Naturally, because since it's my composition mm-hmm. um, and upon instruction from the advertising agency, mm-hmm. naturally, I would have to to uh, decide on the direction, on the mm-hmm. feel of the arrangement. You know, uh, so with Philippine Airlines, you can almost hear the sound of the jet taking right. off. Uh, uh, and um, especially right. you know I'm, I'm glad that uh, you mentioned my CD Strictly Commercial which was not very popular you know not too many CDs were I, sold on that. I shared that I shared that on Facebook and a lot of people like loved it and then when you listen, when you listen to all those jingles, it takes you back mm-hmm. to the past. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because the old songs you hear on radio every day. You can tune in. There are several stations that will play songs from the 80s, from the 90s. But the jingles, you don't hear them anymore. That's right. That's right. But they're very much a part of our growing up years. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let me ask you this, because you know how Facebook is. Uh, they're very strict about copyright laws and everything. You know, I was wondering, because I really want to play all your jingles in one episode of Boomer's Banquet. Are you going to allow us to do that? Yes, why not? Um, uh, and I don't, I don't think that the, those uh, companies would object because... Yes. Of that. Promoting them. 
promoting <laughs> uh, promoting their products. You know, a lot of them are not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, like Sun Quick. Well, I'm Sun Quick, no? Like, no, there is. Uh, there I was at high. I was at high top yesterday. There were, there were a lot of Sun Quick uh, bottles. Okay. Yeah, but still there. There, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, uh, two. Uh, one of your more popular jingles, of course, is the Hallmark jingle, right? Yes, which I co-wrote with uh, Greek Hortaleza. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Late Greek Hortaleza. Greek Hortaleza oh, and I also co-wrote uh, Mamang Sorbetero. We Mamang Sorbetero. Yes. Yeah. Very good. What is your personal favorite among the jingles, <laughs> the hundreds of jingles you've written? Yeah. You know, George... Asking me what my favorite jingle is, or for that matter, what my favorite song is, it's like asking me if I have a favorite child. That's right. <laughs> all, all my children are equal, uh, so they're all favorites of my. I mean, they they all came from my heart, from my brain, from my soul. So I I don't have a special favorite. I like them all. Uh huh. You know, uh, another thing is uh, Filipinos. Uh, when when I, I, I was in radio for several years, almost fifty years in radio, yeah. and I when people ask, you have the voice. June has a really nice voice. I thought you were Leon. saying you have the age. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you know, uh, when people ask me what makes a big hit, I say only two things: either you can dance to it, or you can sing along to it. And your songs are so easy to sing along to. How you. are you able to formulate those melodies, those uh, lines? Uh, don't forget, what did you say? Something that you can dance to and, and sing along sing to. Along. Sing along to, yeah. But don't forget, something you can dream along with. Dream along mm. to. Yeah. Uh. Because, you know, just a few nights ago, I remember the melody Sleepy Shores. Remember Sleepy Shores? Okay, that's a challenge. Bob, Eddie, <laughs> Sleepy Shores. George, George. No. Sleepy Shores. George should be able to. No, okay, I master. don't. Um, I, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a BTS guy. <laughs> Sleepy Shores, I don't know if, if it was ever a radio hit, but it um, went like this. See, I told you. Yeah. So when you hear that song and you listen to it carefully, it takes me back to a place. It takes me back to a time. There, it's playing. That's it? Yep. Uh -huh. The melody is coming. Yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah. Be sure. So I'm saying that uh, um, melodies have a way of taking us back to a time and place. Mm -hmm. I bet you, Bob, do you have such a melody that uh, that takes you back to your childhood or to the time when you and your girlfriend broke up? <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many melodies are associated with parts of your history. Your life yeah. is the radio. Can you In sing fact, something now? One of your songs always makes me cry. One of your songs. What and song? I told you that in one of your guestings. In one of Sample. those TV I told you that. Sample, uh, the, the, the song is Christmas Past. Oh, and yeah. You, you, you uh -huh. told me that if you. Yeah. yeah it's just about something you miss. Yeah, any, chan yeah, any, are, yeah. any chance you could sing that for us right now? A, a, a snippet yeah. of Christmas Past? Christmas Past, I wrote uh, shortly after my grandmother passed away. And, uh, you know, my grandmother played a very 
important part, important role in my life. She came from Cebu and she was musical. In fact, she used to sing those beautiful balitas and lullabies to me. And so the songs that she used to sing planted musical seeds in my mind, seeds that would eventually root a bountiful harvest for me. Yeah. Anyway, Christmas asked it. The sound of bells at early dawn, like music from afar. Soft, gentle breeze, the world at peace, a solitary star. I co-wrote that with Louis Ocampo. Mm -hmm. Yes, Louis Ocampo is my godson. Ah, and he's okay. Nino. I'm his Nino. <laughs> and it's not it's not in the first Christmas album. It's in a Heart's Journey, I think. Uh, the, I don't know. I don't uh, thank you, you love. Know, thank you, it love. Was in the album, thank you, love. And then later on, when we re-released Christmas in Our Hearts uh, after it became a double double diamond record, then I included Christmas Past as a bonus recording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and the words. The words of Christmas past uh, were narrative of Christmas mornings that I remember as a child. You know, the Christmas bells of St. Clement's. Mm -hmm. I was a student, I was an intern in that school. And early, early morning, they would play Christmas tunes on the bells of St. Clement's. Mm -hmm. And you know, so those are precious memories of mine that I still have in my heart. Amazing Christmas past. Christmas Going past. back to memory lane. So yes, in, after the 60s, we go to the 70s where you had so many RPN9 TV specials. That's right. That's right. It was after my uh, entry in Japan, World Popular Song Festival, Can We Just Stop and Talk a While? And when I came back, uh, the RPN produced several television specials mm -hmm. featuring my music. Mm -hmm. Featuring my music. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so I, I thank God for that, for, the, um, for those years. In fact, uh, I guess you, you were the first local show which had a full orchestra with strings backing you up live, right? Because uh, they showed it on cam um, uh, in those Channel 9 specials. Yes, yes, I remember. I remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, uh, some, of these, some of these are Christmas specials. Uh, but I had not yet composed Christmas in our hearts at the time. No. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember one of those specials, Joe, in the seventies. But that was at the height of the popularity of funk and disco, and your song made waves just the same as just Joe Marie Chan songs. Uh, how would you explain that? I'm sorry. What 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 did you say again? But at around the time in the seventies, Joe, and those specials came out, and your songs came out uh, one after the other, like Refrain, uh, I Love to Last, and. Uh, Deep in my heart, they were all there. Uh, that was the height of the funk and disco trends, and then heavy heavy rap was already in there. But yours ha occupied the space in pop radio. I'm sure June would tell us about this because uh, he was a veteran already at the time. Yeah. <laughs> How do you explain that? No. Oh, nice, nice segue, Bob. Very nice segue. No, it wasn't even fact, at uh, that time. Right? You're Joe Marie, uh, I was I was just wondering, out of curiosity again, uh, because you were mentioning about the songs and great memories. Do you have every single, every song or every album that you have released? Do you still have them in your collection? Yes. Each and every one of them. Yes, I still have uh, the singles. I have the LPs and, mm -hmm. of course, the CDs. Wow. But what I don't wow. have any are the cassettes. Mm -hmm. I don't have any mm -hmm. cassettes in my collection. I see. 
I see. So every one of them. Okay, amazing, amazing. And mm. when you go to con- when you do some concerts, when you're invited to do concerts abroad or even here in the Philippines, do you take in requests? Just curious. Yes, yes, uh, mm-hmm. I do, and I'll tell you a very interesting request. Okay. Okay. Um, several years ago, uh, I was invited to Lanao del Norte. By mm-hmm. by the governor then, Governor Dimaporo, Dimaporo, mm-hmm. in, she invited me to do a concert, uh, and it was held in a gym, and it was packed. It was middle of the year, okay, middle of the year, and it was packed, and mostly Muslims, predominantly Muslims. You could see the way they look, and you know the way they were dressed. And I did about a two-hour show. Wow. I was singing, yeah, I was singing hit after hit after hit after hit, you know. And then I was running out of hits. So <laughs> they were asking for more, more, more. And I didn't know what to sing anymore. So I asked them, I said, what would you like to hear? And you know what? They requested for Christmas in our hearts. Amazing. Really? Wow. And this was a predominantly Muslim group. Uh-huh. So, fortunately, my studio engineer had the minus one. Mm-hmm. So, I gave into the request and I sang Christmas in our hearts. And you know what? It, at the chorus part, the whole gym was singing along with me. And that's when I realized that thank God the song had transcended religion. It had, it had crossed borders so that now even the non-Christians knew that song. That is amazing. Indeed. It's, a, it's God's gift to me. It's mm-hmm. God's precious gift to me. And I acknowledge that every day. I thank the good Lord for the gift of good life, for the gift of good health, and for the gift of music. Mm-hmm. Very nice. That's a very nice story. Hey, uh, uh, Matthew Fernando here, Joe, uh, before we move on. Uh, were you able to find the, in the kingdom of my heart? Oh, Matthew, was that you? Uh-huh. My song of love, it comes your way. Do you know that song, guys? Oh. Na, 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 na. Do you know that song? Okay. Yes. George, George, how about you, uh, Bob? No, I do not. <laughs> how about you? Yeah. The song, oh, nice. of, yeah, my song of love was originally an Ilongo love song. Mm-hmm. It was called Walay Angay. Mm-hmm. Walay Angay meaning no, no, incomparable. Incomparable. So uh, it was recorded by Carmen Perina. Oh, yes, yes. Carmen Perina. Yeah. And I believe that Nora Nor uh, was, I, you know, she idolized Carmen Perina the way I idolized my preacher. Mm-hmm. Ilongo, si Carmen Perina, Ilongo singer. Siya. No, I, I don't think that she was Ilonga. Carmen Perilla. She she did several several songs, several recordings. She was a jukebox. jukebox. Ah, jukebox. Uh-huh. I I remember she used to wear that uh, those uh, glasses, the the, the vintage uh, eyeglasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. But Kathy was asking me if I found Kingdom of My Heart. Was that her? Was that her text? May I read? The yeah, text? Kingdom of My Heart. Uh, where is it, Matthew? Were you able to find the kingdom of you were looking for it when we last met? I gave you a single of the other song you were looking for, My Song of Love. Yes, thank you again, Matthew. Um, I don't know if I was able to find Kingdom of My Heart, but okay, guys, who among you would remember the Kingdom of My Heart? Come on, may I see some hands? How, the, how does it go? <laughs> Sing George, it first. Eddie. How does it go? 
You are the queen in the kingdom of my heart. You see, I was only, maybe I was only five or seven years old when that when song you did that? was... No, no, I didn't do that. I didn't okay. write that. I was uh -huh. only five or seven years old when that radio, uh, when our radio uh, was playing that song. Okay, June, now I know where the coffee sound is coming from. From you. Where? From me. You. you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just don't worry. Don't worry about he needs scotch. Joe, I think I found it. Oh, there. Carmen listen, Parina. Listen. When you were five then? <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's like see, what's coming from an old, old movie. Yeah. You see, you see June, uh, composers grew up hearing all of these songs. And they're, as I said, they're like, they're like seeds that you plant in their subconscious. And eventually, when they start writing their music, they would be influenced by all the music that they loved. That's right. Yes, yes, and, that's and right. It's it's like a perpetual LSS, last song syndrome. Like uh, I always I always remember ito po ang inyong tia deli. And then Lila Benitez, uh, she recently passed on. Uh, her favorite song is I don't know why I love you like I do. <laughs> I don't know why I, do. I just do. <laughs> okay. okay, I have a trivia for you guys. What radio station used to play this piece? DZMT. Mm, okay, then next, next. What's what's the radio station AM huh, used to play this melody? Summer love, summer yeah. love. That's correct. Uh -huh. What's the station? DZMT. DZMT of the Manila Times. It's the voice <laughs> of the Manila Times. Yes, and Joe San Diego was the midnight, right? Yeah, and she would say, "Hi, I'm Joe San Diego." <laughs> you know, Joe. Joe still. Joe is still alive. Joe San Diego. She's a I good believe so. Right. Uh -huh. And we often communicate with each other, Joe San Diego. And then her theme song was, "I will love you as I yeah. love you all my life." <laughs> okay, Bob, who sang that song? Teddy, Hi. Teddy, who sang that song? I will love you as I love you all my life. Mm -hmm. Alex, Alex Ka would know that very well. Oh, yeah. Alex, <laughs> Alex. <would> answer. <laughs> Joe, Joe, no. Was it Johnny James? The ti no. I would have guessed. The title is called As I Love You. As I Love You. Well, yeah. Bob, Bob surely will be able to find it on YouTube somehow. No, I have yeah. it on <laughs> A Shirley Bassey record. Yes, yeah. it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Shirley Bassey. I will love you as I loved you all my life. Every single, uh, every moment spent with you. It was also recorded by Joe Stafford. Joe oh, yeah, Stafford. Joe Stafford. Right. Uh huh. Joe, after, after the RPN 9 specials, where you went. You went to the USA for 11 years. Wow, memorize mo, Teddy. research. And then, were you able to compose some songs too while staying in the US? I composed many, many songs. Why? Because all of a sudden, I was missing the Philippines. Uh -huh. I was missing my friends here. Okay? And also, in the US, I was exposed suddenly to a wider range of music. I was exposed to classical music, the opera. I was exposed to Broadway. 
to all the the new genre of music there in the in the US and so it broadened my horizon so i continue to write yes yes and one of the songs that is memorable for me that i composed while i was living in the united states is hahana pinko lyrics, ha -ha lyrics were written by jimmy santiago Mm -hmm. And the song expressed the feelings of an OFW mm -hmm. leaving the country, missing the Philippines, you know. That's it. Mm -hmm. Anthony Costello, right? It was uh, recorded originally by Anthony Costello. Mm -hmm. It was my entry to the 1979 Popular Song Festival. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a mandolin, right? Uh, you used the mandolin for that. I don't know. It was uh, Doming Amarillo, the late uh -huh. Doming Amarillo, uh -huh. who arranged that song. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so he, he was able to put in as many Philippine colors into uh -huh. that song. You know, it was essentially an OFW missing his country. Was it you know, also that, his idea, Joe, that uh, to put a disco break somewhere in the middle, dun, 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 a yeah. tempo break? Yes. Yeah, because at that time, as uh, George mentioned, it was already the time of the disco, the hustle. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Love both, I think. Yeah, so it was nice to put in that uh, that middle part to make it sound like the OFW is now abroad. Mm -hmm. You know, so it changed from being Filipino to an international uh, ambiance, and then bumalik siya sa Philippines. Very nice. That gave me goosebumps when I heard that song, Ana Pinko. You should yes, also, George. You should also hear the version by Lea Salonga. Oh, that is a good version too. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite it long though, but it's beautiful. It will make you cry. But uh, you know, ju during the first Metropop Festival, my favorite was Min San Pa by Janet Basco. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But that, unfortunately, it lost. The song yeah, lost. But that was a beautiful song. That is a beautiful song. I'd like to think so. I hope uh -huh. you don't mind my saying so. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also one of my favorite melodies. The lyrics to Min San Pa were written by Rolando S. Tino. Oh, the uh, Rolando Tino, right? Yes, a mm -hmm. professor at the Ateneo. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a text that came in just now. It said something about the disco beat. I saw <laughs> it. Jo Marie Mercado, I did like how it segued to a disco beat. They sang it in her concert that kept it slow. Yes, mm -hmm. well, Tocayo, hello. Uh, is that, uh, where was that picture taken? Is that Teotihuacan? Is that in Teotihuacan or was it in, in India? Uh, anyway. <laughs> Looks very uh, uh, yeah. Tokayo, Tokayo Jomari, as I mentioned, uh, that disco beat is was because to make it contemporary, uh, George Boone had mentioned that the song was popular at the time of the, the disco and the... And the um, um, what's the other one? My Lamosa Bimbo. Bimbo. Uh, El, Bimbo. El Bimbo era. El right. Bimbo. So, so I had to also make the song uh, contemporary and at the same time to show that the OFW was already living abroad. Mm. 
That's why. So, uh, you know, I, I, I know you didn't like it, but, you know, fortunately, a great majority of the people liked it. So I'm grateful. You know, you can't please everyone. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, so, okay, let's move on. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, those years where uh, you became a real household name uh, when Beautiful Girl came out. How did this come about, Beautiful Girl? Okay, I, I came back to the Philippines in 1986. Okay. And... Uh, you know, my, my comeback single, the song that reintroduced me to the public was Tell Me Your Name, uh -huh. Your Name, Your Love, -na 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 -na. Tell Me Your Name. And you know how I, how, I, how I was influenced by that melody? Tell Me Your Name, ta -ra -ra -ra. You know what influenced me? Mm -hmm. What? Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Tell me your name. So you were talking to aliens at the time, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in the US. I was talking to aliens. I was talking to Americans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, John Marie says uh, that picture is in Borobudur. Borobudur. Oh, okay. oh yes. Indonesia. I knew it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Borobudur. <laughs> anyway, so going back to okay, so tell me your name, and then what happened? Tell me your name became a minor hit, uh -huh. and uh, it was also at the same time when the CD was first introduced mm -hmm. into the market. So what we did was to release the CD called a Golden Collection, so that to reintroduce me to a younger generation who probably didn't know Afterglow, Deep in My Heart, Can We Just Stop and Talk a While, Afraid for Love to Fade. So that sort of uh, reintroduced me to the, to the music public. And mm -hmm. uh, Tell Me Your Name was a minor hit, uh, but then I was inspired to come up with another album uh, three years later, and that album is called Constant Change, which had, thank God, several hits. Beautiful Girl, Please Be Careful With My Heart, Sing Me Your Song Again, Daddy, Can't We Start Over Again, My Girl, My Woman, My Friend, you know. And, uh, and that was the first Diamond album in history, right? Yes. They 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 couldn't they couldn't figure out the category anymore. So they just they they just decided let's give Joe Joe Marie a diamond album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, guys, uh, you know, in any industry, in any ever, whether it's recording or radio station or politics or business, there's always the element of envy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot not eradicate that and you just have to be patient and take it and deal with it i mean mm -hmm. you don't have to uh, fight back yeah you know, envy will always be there i mean cain and abel i mean you, <laughs> you don't have to to go back to to history uh but i remember when when my when i was given the first diamond record award i remember one of the local artists and it's not important for me to to tell you who it was, uh, uh, <clears throat> he was he was on TV. I, I don't remember whether it was in but and uh, he was saying Diamond Record. Anong Diamond Diamond? Wala namang Diamond Record dito. Makasal si na meron. It was a bit derogatory because uh, yung sinabi niya sa China because. I have my Chinese ancestry, uh -huh. but I always tell my friends, I have Chinese blood, yes, but I am a Filipino. In my heart and my soul, I am a Filipino, and I'm proud of being a Filipino. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, look, George, you have American blood. You were related to Daniel Boone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> June, June, I know you also have Mexican blood. You were mm -hmm. related to 
General Santa Ana of the Alamo. He personally back of the frame. Sabi natin, ikaw lang yung nakapag-successfully combine ng being a businessman and an artist. Ano ba yung sikreto doon? Um, the secret there is uh, being focused when you're doing something partic in particular. For example, when you want to when you want to do your songs, you switch off everything else and you concentrate on that. In the same way, in the same way, when you're doing your business, you have to be uh, focused and concentrate on it. Can I can I quote you on that? Because I have a podcast. It's called The Masterclass of George Boone, and I'd love to quote that particular uh, phrase of yours because it's going to be very good advice to a lot of millennials right now. And uh, the Z generation, if they call it Generation Z or whatever. Zoomers. So, yeah, uh, I'd like I'd like to get your permission to uh, uh, if I could quote that. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. They may struggle within you because uh, you belong to a family of businessmen. Pero mas mahili ka rin sa arts, especially music. Growing up. Yes. Well. Um, you have to learn the how to deal with the struggle. You know, life is not easy. Life is a struggle, but also life is a challenge that you will end up enjoying. Yeah, because I guess um, we have our left side of the brain and our right side of the brain. I'm sure all of us have uh, artistic talent somewhere, whether it's in painting, or in music or something else. So you have to use that gift that God has given you. You know, because at the end of at the end of our lives, you, you read it in the Bible, our Lord will ask you, What did you do with the talent I gave you? Correct. Correct. Someone will say, Lord, I buried it in the ground. Here it is. <laughs> oh, you did not use it? No, I buried it in the ground. Or someone will say, I doubled it, our Lord, mm -hmm. here. You know, so very true. Yeah. Very true. Okay. Jomali says, Beautiful Girl was a monster hit in Indonesia. When I would introduce myself and I say Jomari, they all shout, Beautiful girl, beautiful girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. You know who was responsible for for my song becoming a hit in Indonesia? Okay. I let you in on a secret, okay? There was a, a DJ named June Hello? Santa Ana. Uh oh. June Santa Ana was a DJ in a radio station. I forget where. But wh where was that, June? Um, uh, June got frozen. I think he's frozen, yeah. Yeah. June, you're not there anymore. June was a radio DJ in a station in Batam, which was a neighboring state of Indonesia. And that was the time when Beautiful Girl was popular in the Philippines. So he played it in his program and it exposed the song to Malaysians, Singaporeans, and Indonesians. And because of that, Beautiful Girl became a, a big hit in that part of Southeast Asia until a Chinese singer from Hong Kong named Aaron Kwok, yeah. Aaron Kwok, K-W-O-K. -K. Uh, Aaron Kwok did a Chinese version of Beautiful Girl. In fact, you can, you can, um, you can download it from Spotify, Aaron Kwok. And then there was also a Japanese uh, singer named Yasuo T, Y-A-S-U-O, Yasuo T, that uh, did a Japanese version of Beautiful girl. Unfortunately, I don't know how the words go. Beautiful <laughs> girl, Osaka Mio, in Tokyo. <laughs> hey, nawala, nawala si George. We're having some technical difficulties. Oh, yeah, there's three of us now. George disappeared. This is it, Joe. The Iron Quok version. Joe, 
uh, one more question. Bakit wait, wait, wait. Bakit okay. Sarah Aaron Fox. Wait. Ayun. Oh, there it is. Japanese version of you. Yeah. Ja- uh, no, Chinese. 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 Okay. Aaron Cantonese. Kwok. Cantonese. Aaron Kwok is popular in Hong Kong. Okay, okay Ted. <laughs> Question. Yeah, yung question ko kanina, why, why uh, 1986 for your comeback? Was it because of the new uh, era then? We were right after the EDSA revolution? Yes, uh, because the reason why we went to the United States is because my father's business at the time was sugar trading. trading. We were exporting sugar to the United States buying sugar from planters and selling it to industrial users and so on. And when martial law was declared, uh, President Marcos took over the entire sugar industry. Mm -hmm. So we could no longer do our business buying and selling sugar from planters. The planters were mandated to sell directly to the government. And so overnight, we, our business had to close down. So that's why I left for, for New York. And uh, I set up a small company there and I tried to buy and sell sugar from Central America, from South America, from countries like Peru, Honduras, Dominican Republic. And uh, so with the EDSA revolution, President Corey gave back the sugar industry to the private sector and so we were back in the we were back in in business business so yeah I, I i flew back to the philippines and so i i resumed my recording career it's amazing you, you have always had that thing in you joe no? uh music always comes in uh, all the time kahit na meron kang ibang iintindihan you have to yeah. put music in there yeah, because it's in the left side of my brain, mm-hmm. <laughs> right side of the brain, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. God-given talent. God-given talent. You know, all yes. of us have. Kaso si na lumulat jo, di ka nagiwan sa amin. Yeah, some are born to be uh, uh, lawyers, doctors, yes. accountants, uh, pilots. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. Boxers, <laughs> Some boxers are billionaires. You know that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Somebody lives near you, right? <laughs> uh, I although I only met him once. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I went to Mindanao one time, and then we sang duet together because he loves to sing. Yes, yes. that's right. Uh huh. Mani Pacquiao loves to sing, and he would go to the karaoke in his younger years, and so we sang "Constant Change" together. At one of his uh, uh, birthday parties, constant mm-hmm. change of all songs, eh? Yeah, and <laughs> his wife Jinky invited me uh, to go and surprise him, surprise mm-hmm. Manny on his birthday. Yeah, what 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 keeps you going? Like you know, uh, September first, I was listening to Arnold Club. You all of a sudden you popped in, and uh, you kept on singing, uh, changing the lyrics of your songs, and then just kept on singing. Uh, it was it so it was so much fun that uh, Arnold didn't even know what to do anymore. <laughs> you practically took over the whole show. No, what no keeps much. you going, Joe? <laughs> well, you know, um, when I was growing up, I loved the cartoon Peter Pan. Uh huh. Would you do you remember Peter Pan? Yes. Ted, do you remember? Ted? Yeah. Wendy, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I do. <laughs> you know the the melody of Peter Pan was do 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 the second star to the right da 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 da. Okay, Peter Pan was the boy that never That's grew girl. old. Mm-hmm. That's right. He never grew old. So all of us 
should have that Peter Pan in our yeah. heart. We should not, we can grow old. I uh, know we can grow up, but we should not grow old. Mm -hmm. Grow up, yeah. I mean, we will have wrinkles, we will lose our hair, okay, we will we will stoop a little bit, we will sl walk slowly, but in our heart, we should always retain being little boys. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So uh, um, I guess that's also the reason why uh, a lot of your songs, um, especially your Christmas songs, hark back to those old days when you were young, uh, nostalgia and stuff. Uh, I noticed that with, the, with your Christmas songs. It really brings back the Christmas flavor and the Christmas feeling in you. I have a song, uh, George, called... Um, uh, what was that? The Times We're In. And then another song called Going to the Past. Mm -hmm. Has any one of you heard that song? Going to the Past. Going Times past. We're In. Is, is that in the CD uh, you sent me? Uh, yes, it's in the compilation. Mm -hmm. okay. That's Times We're In. If you listen to the word, to find the words in my mind for the proper names to call the times that we're in. Of senseless wars and power games from the Middle East to the Asian jungle, we're in. Listen, we live in times burning down. With the weight of a constant fear of things both known and unknown, friends and foes, famine, wars, and cancer growth. Okay. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Times we're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We live in times burdened down with the weight of a constant fear of things both known and unknown, friends and foes, famine, wars, and cancer growth. This is going to the past. Love the lush drinks. I was reminiscing and going home to Ilo Ilo, where I was a little boy. Thought I'd drop my work for a day and get away from the city. Getting bored of being trapped in this existence was destined for me. Knowing there is little time before I lose my sanity From the pressures of the clockwork in the society So I flew into the old town where I was born Situated 20 years south of everything I've ever known. Though I know it's been so long, but I can still remember. Somehow, snatches of those memories have managed to keep me warm. Yeah. That's the idea of the song, going to the past. And you know, the, the nice thing about it is uh, it has a country feel to it. And it, it somehow adds to the flavor of the song, right? You know why, George? Because when I was composing that song, the, uh, the toast of Tin Pan Alley in the United States mm -hmm. was Jim Webb. Ooh, Jimmy Webb. Jimmy Webb. So MacArthur. 
I was influenced by the music of Jim Webb. Uh -huh. It sounds like a lot, a lot like a Glenn Campbell song. So a lot yeah. of the songs written by Jimmy Webb. Right? Yes. Very and nice. I try to sound like Glenn Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Okay. So, um, um, nostalgia well, hi, June, memories. <laughs> June, welcome hey, back. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we, June, we, we thank you. you for a while. I was talking about your in, in Batam. <laughs> Oh, oh, the beautiful girl thing. I know. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were the one responsible for bringing the song Beautiful Girl to Southeast Asia, to Indonesia, <laughs> Malaysia, Singapore. Mm -hmm. Look what you've well, done. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what now we're up. <laughs> oh, Leonora Reyes Soliman. Try to all, uh, thank you to all that we've seen again. Our favorite John Richard, a blessed day to all. God bless you too, Leonora. <laughs> okay, so uh, June, when you first heard Beautiful Girl, did you feel that it was really going to be a really monster hit? As a matter of fact, the, yes. Uh, we were actually, uh, I didn't even think about, you know, how the Indonesian uh, listeners would react to the song. I just instantly felt that. It was going to be hit. You know, Joe Marie, uh, George, uh, there were there were actually two songs I was looking at there. Uh, mm -hmm. Please Be Careful With My Heart mm -hmm. and uh, Beautiful Girl. And I said, I was, I was, I, I said, I'd have to ch uh, choose two. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then we had, I had a category in the station called new music. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'll, I'll start with Beautiful Girl. Mm -hmm. And the rest was... Uh, History, George, uh, Joe Marie, uh, everything was just, I, I don't know, have, have you told George, uh, Bob, or even uh, but Teddy, have, I, I don't know, because we were talking about this off air earlier. I was in a musical shop uh, looking for some CDs to buy. I mean, because I was looking for album songs, album or I was a, an album oriented guy then. And there was a, there was a buyer, a customer who walked in asking for this song, Beautiful Girl. And, what? Beautiful Girl? No. Oh, so, so the girl had the, the owner listen to the song. I said, no, I don't know the song. Where did, you, where did you get this song? And she said it was from a station called Magic 106.15. Uh, Magic? Here, the guy's beside you. Ask him. <laughs> and so, Jewelry, that was it. I had to give her a copy. Yeah, I said, you won't find it here. It's only available in the Philippines. So I said, come to the station. I'll give you a copy. And she was so grateful about it. But, you know, June, uh, thanks to you, uh, Beautiful Girl was recorded by Aaron Kwok from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Yasuo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, Japan. And also, uh -huh. Please Be Careful With My Heart was covered in Hong Kong by Sandy Lam and uh, Sally Yi. Yeah. Wow. It was also in wow. Cantonese. In Cantonese. Cantonese or or Mandarin. I, I don't remember I exactly. See. I I still have those records. And I I would love to share the music with you, except that if you play it on on, on radio, people will say, wait, wait, just because uh the Chinese have taken West Philippine Sea. <laughs> Just because they took away Fuga Island, you mean? They <laughs> Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, after "Beautiful Girl," you really became uh, just what I said earlier, a household name, and then Christmas songs the christmas songs came along and they instantly became huge hits uh, uh christmas in our hearts for instance uh somebody was asking earlier is it true that there was another girl uh who was supposed to sing that song with you yeah my original uh -huh. choice was Lea Salonga. i don't know okay. if you've, heard, uh, you've ever heard of her <laughs> <laughs> Let me jog my memory. <laughs> she was, she was my original choice. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. There's a pretty girl who just came in. Gigi Ancajas Gabriel. Gabriel. Hi, Mr. Joe Marie Chan, an avid fan here. Love all your songs. Thank you, Gigi. 
There was there was a beautiful song named after you. Gigi. Gigi, right. Okay. Uh where were we? I'm you know, I as I get older I'm getting <laughs> Joe, I just I just remember one person. Tokayumo, Joe Kirino. Ah, Joe Kirino. Yeah. yeah. I guess, uh, seeing Stars with JQ. Yeah, Seeing Stars. I yeah. used to be there. Seeing Stars, JQ. I was like, Joe Kirino, yeah. May, uh -huh. you, may you rest in peace. Yeah. Did, you, did, you also, peace. did you also get the Master Sardines and the uh, Birch Tree <laughs> Milk Powder? Just say it, please pass the mic. Where was I? I was so Christmas, <laughs> Christmas songs, the Christmas songs. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. my memory these days, uh, I don't know. But my wife has given me this supplement that uh -huh. I take every day. Mm -hmm. It has really improved my memory 100%. Uh, uh, the supplement is called... Uh, <laughs> 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 and it's been 30 years, right? Uh, ever since Please Be Careful With My Heart. Leia Salonga. So how did it happen? It never got Leia. No, and, because, uh, no, because uh, she was my first choice. Mm -hmm. But uh, her recording company at that time refused to have her cross label to mm -hmm. Universal. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's competition, no? Mm -hmm. My second choice was Monique Wilson. Okay. Uh -huh. And I sent the melody to her, and she agreed. And uh, but then the weekend before we recorded the song, she lost her voice. Mm. And so somehow, you know, the Holy Spirit was had its hand on the song from the very start, because the Holy Spirit must have wanted. A father and daughter tandem uh -huh. to sing that song to be more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so very nice. Lisa Chan, my daughter, became uh, the third choice and became an instant star because of that. She has a lovely voice. Thank yes. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, she's it, a star. She doesn't want to. She didn't want to come up with an album of songs. No, she. She's more of a corporate, uh, corporate figure, and now mm -hmm. she's other. Um, okay. So you know, speak, speaking of that, no, uh, of family and everything, or of uh, those who uh, who might inherit uh, your talent and everything. I remember I signed up one of your sons to a recording contract when I was at Diner Records, and uh, when I was still at radio, I used to play all the songs of uh, your son's group together with Cowboy Santos. Oh, generation. Generation. I love the songs of Generation. Thank you, George. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, the group disbanded after a mm -hmm. while. The son of Celeste de Gaspi, mm -hmm. the son of Papagita. Yes. And my and my my two sons. Yeah, they came out with original songs too. I would have wanted to manage them. Uh, I was uh, I, I was really. Oh, I really wanted to manage them before because I thought they, they, they were really going to be very huge hits if uh, managed properly. Yeah. Very good. Uh, very talented. Unfortunately, the, the album was not pushed very aggressively. Mm -hmm. So uh, they disbanded after a while. Uh huh. That's too, so, yeah. that's sad. That's sad. Uh huh. Mm. So uh, uh, do they have any plans of pursuing their, their career after this, the musical career? No, because they have disbanded. But uh, Joe, my son, continues mm -hmm. to compose. Mm -hmm. And my, my other son, Michael, who mm -hmm. is more of a jazz-oriented uh, musician and uh, composer, came out with his own album called Five Corners. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were signed up by Star Records of ABS-CBN, mm -hmm. but it was not pushed hard enough. It was mm -hmm. not supported very well. You know, uh, songs are like are like children of the composers. And if you don't uh, push the song to its maximum potential, it is like a child whose career was 
uh, was made sayang, you know. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I I like it into that. Sorry. It's it it's it's really the nurturing that really matters, and uh, and uh, you you nurtured all your songs through the years. That's why they're up there, right? Yeah, but um, I could not I could not personally push the songs like Times We're In. Mm -hmm. I did not meet. Uh, <coughs> it was up to, mm -hmm. it was up to the recording companies to promote them. Mm -hmm. So I was hats off. I mean, but it's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. those songs are still available on Spotify, and perhaps uh, <clears throat> a new generation of singers could revive them. Uh -huh. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so uh, uh, Christmas in Our Hearts uh, is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, we'd like to show the whole clip of your whole family, the three generations singing Christmas in Our Hearts. Would you? Uh, okay. Can we do that? Yes, Bob? Yes. Bob? Sure. Bob is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I am? Yep. Show the video. Uh-oh, can't show the video. Whenever I see girls yeah, and see boys it. selling lanterns on the street, I remember scream. a child in the manger as he sleeps. Whenever there are people giving gifts, exchanging cards, I believe that Christmas is truly in their hearts. Let's light our Christmas tree for a bright tomorrow Where the twins are at peace and all are one in God Let's sing Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday this season, may we never forget the love we have for Jesus. Let him be the one who guide us as another new year starts. And may the spirit of Christmas be always in our hearts. In every prayer and every song, the community unites, celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let love like that starlight on that first Christmas morn lead us back to the manger where Christ the child was born. So come, let us rejoice, come and sing a Christmas carol, with one big joyful voice, proclaim the name of the Lord. Let's sing Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday, this season may we never forget the love we have for Jesus. Let him be the one to guide us as another new year starts. And may the spirit of Christmas be always in our hearts. Let's sing Merry Christmas and a happy holiday. This season may we never forget the love we have for Jesus. That gave that gave me goosebumps. Beautiful. All right. Okay, uh, Joe. <clears throat> unfortunately, we don't we don't have uh, uh, we we've run out of time. Uh, hello. Hello, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Joe, uh, we'd like to thank you, and uh, hopefully we could invite you again if you if you don't mind. Uh, oh, if we could invite mind. you for it's a part a two. It's a pleasure being with all of you guys. Thank you very much for the time. 
and uh, well, we hope we didn't disturb your Saturday morning brunch or whatever. Um, no. We know, no. uh, and, and you know uh, what? What we could do probably is, uh, if you, if you uh, guys don't mind, if you could invite your whole family uh, to guest with you next time around. Why not? Except that my, you know, three of my married children have their own families. They live uh -huh. separately. So it would be hard to zoom all of us together. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, probably, probably we'll uh, the Lord, the Lord will figure out a way for all of you to be together because it's so nice. Uh, it's the spirit of Christmas, family. It's the spirit of Christmas. Any last words, uh, Joe, before we uh, say goodbye? Yeah. Well, uh, I had a song that I bet Bob and Teddy would not know. It's called. <laughs> it's called if we only had more time together. I know that, Joe. I know, yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have all your albums. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, uh, uh, so next time, we will talk about the songs, the unknown songs of yes. the family. Yes. When that is over. Yeah. Very good. Thank you if very I'm much. Really sure. If I may ask, uh, yes, we can invite Mary Ann to join us for a discussion about the good old days, too. So, yes, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will tell her. I will suggest it to her. Very yeah, nice. I know she has a lot of things to share with us that you probably do not know yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, All right. Boomer's Banquet, thank you very much. George, Teddy, thank you. Bob, and June. Thank you very much for, for Pleasure, making Jamari. a part of your Saturday morning. God Pleasure. bless you. God bless, bless you. Bless you. God bless you God too. Bless you. Thank you. June, what about you? Last uh, last words. Last words. Hey, uh, I, I was actually surprised to be invited mm -hmm. over Boomer's Banquet, but thank you very much. I enjoyed every second of it, although I don't know if it was intentional to cut me off a few for a few minutes but you know we were we, we, were, we were cut off, we were cut off at the same time yeah george was this was a uh, uh -huh. we were cut off, we were cut off oh. for, uh, at, at, at the same time probably it's our oh. uh, internet <laughs> service provider <laughs> <laughs> okay no, but thank you guys for having me in thank you so uh -huh. much and uh, we hope you join it was us nice again. talking to you Hey, June, join us again yes. uh, the, the, for the second round of uh, JMC, okay? Okay, okay, sure, sure. Right. My pleasure. Let me know when. Thank you, June. All right. Bob, thanks. George, thank you. Thank so you so much. All right. Teddy? Okay, another uh, interesting, exciting episode with Mr. Christmas himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many, thank you for the opportunity to share stories with the... Uh, JMC. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you, Dad. And See you next uh, week. To mm -hmm. Bob, uh, George, our t shirt from yes. uh, <laughs> your Jales of Design Makati. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bob. Yeah. Thank you. What a what a show. Um, what a show. And dami pang masasabi si George. Si, si Joe Marie Satin. In fact, oh, yeah. I bitahan natin siya ulit. I hope we he will, will have we will. time. We At saka yung mga uh, nakikinig at nanonood sa atin, thank you so much for, for being part of this morning's show. Remember, mm -hmm. you can also watch this on YouTube and then listen to this. In case you're driving, wag manonood. Mm -hmm. Spotify version. Yung, yung podcast natin is an audio version. So it's on Spotify and other related platforms wherever you get your podcasts. Nandun mm -hmm. lang yan. Very Good. nice. Okay, and thank you very much also again to uh, Roy Ordialis. Thank you so much for providing us T-shirts. And I uh, hope you can send us your logo so we could post it on, on, on our teaser, on our ads. And uh, T-shirt, please, Ryan De La Cruz. Teka muna. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you, Seria Restaurant also and uh, Audiophile. And um, I'd like to ask you, invite you all to... Um, join me in my podcast. It's going to be launching uh, this Thursday, next Thursday. Uh, it's called The Masterclass with George Boone. It's going to be on Spotify. So please join me. Uh, very interesting topics that we're going to be taking up every single week. Until next week and until the next time, Joe Marie Chan is going to be with us. Thank you. This has been Boomer's Banquet. Good night. God bless.